Hello everyone. So till now, in the previous sections, we have discussed about the different mechanisms of acquiring new information. Those mechanisms were either the habituation and the sensitization. What was happening in that? Either the uh, post tetanic potentiation or the long term potentiation or the presynaptic facilitation, right? All these events happened. So, what is common between all these different mechanism? The common is there is a presynaptic neuron and then there is a post synaptic neuron. So, the change was the change in the synaptic transmission between these two neurons, the presynaptic and post synaptic. Either they get facilitated or they got inhibited, right? Like the long term depression was also there. So, the change happened was the change in the process of the synaptic transmission either it get increased or get decreased and via this different mechanism you acquire a new information. So before acquiring the new information it was not like there was not any synaptic transmission happening there was synaptic transmission happening but at the time of acquiring the new information that synaptic transmission got a certain change. Now in future when the next time the synaptic transmission happens between the pre synaptic and post synaptic neuron it will have a history back right and what is that history that history is you acquire the new information by changing the synaptic transmission so that history that remain remnant part of the event that happened while acquiring the new, new information that is called as memory traces आपके लाइफ में कुछ इवेंट्स हुए हैं इट वोंट ऑटोमेटिकली फेड अवे कि आप जस्ट आप मॉर्निंग में उठे हो यू आर वेरी फ्रेश यू यू हैड अ वेरी बैड डे तो एट द टाइम ऑफ द नाइट व्हेन यू आर अबाउट टू गो टू द स्लीप यू कांट से यू वोंट बी सेम व्हेन यू वेक अप इन द मॉर्निंग राइट बिकॉज़ समथिंग हैपेंड थ्रू आउट द डे सिमिलर सिचुएशन इज देयर लाइक before acquiring the information we take this example the part one as you got up in the morning and this is at the time of going to bed at the night so obviously it won't stay same the next day when you wake up the next day when you wake up then there will be still some part some remnant of the previous day that will be before going to sleep so this remnant part is called as memory traces right i hope you got this thing the memory traces and this memory traces whether it stays for a longer duration or a shorter duration sometimes it will fade away after few hours or few days or the few weeks depending on that sometimes it will stay throughout the life depending on that duration for how long that memory traces stay the memory is divided into short term memory or intermediate or the long term memory right now who is responsible for these memory traces to stay for the shorter duration or the longer duration for that there will be certain changes now broadly we can say there are three type of the changes either the chemical change or the physical change or structural change now what is the difference between these three type of the changes chemical changes is like when you stimulate the neuron the neurotransmitter getting released it gets enhanced for few seconds right like the long term potentiation or the post tetanic potentiation so that chemical changes will bring about the changes in the memory traces for a shorter duration so that happens in the case of the short term memory right like because that chemical changes the neurotransmitter release happened it gets increased but it cannot continuously 24/7 for the years it can continuously keep on increasing no it won't stay increased it will stay increased for a certain duration that duration can be either the seconds or the minutes at the max it can be the minutes or the hours so that is for the mechanism of action of the short term memory now if we continue if we keep on repeating that certain things that will bring about not only in the chemical changes it will bring about the changes in the form of the physical right what was the physical changes like the perfect example was for the presynaptic facilitation in the previous section if you want to 
read up in detail, you can go back over there in the presynaptic facilitation that NMDA AMPA receptor. What was happening? What happened in the NMDA AMPA receptor? It happened like there is a presynaptic neuron that was releasing glutamate, right? Glutamate neurotransmitter. And in the post synaptic, there were NMDA receptor and then there was AMPA receptor. And this glutamate, it binds to AMPA receptor as well as NMDA receptor. But as soon as the glutamate binds to the AMPA receptor, it will get opened up and there will be influx of the sodium ion. But if the glutamate binds to the NMDA receptor, it won't get opened up because the NMDA receptor needs the attachment of the glutamate plus removal of a mechanical obstruction in the form of the magnesium ion that is obstructing the channel and that magnesium part will be removed only after a certain level of depolarization that happens in the post synaptic potential this post synaptic neuron so glutamate gets released binds to AMPA opens up the AMPA ionic exchange happens via the AMPA it brings about certain depolarization in this neuron and that depolarization will remove the obstacle in the form of the magnesium ion then only NMDA receptor will open up and once the NMDA receptor opens up what was that after the opening of the NMDA receptor it in, uh, enhance the activity of the AMPA that was one part right if it only enhances the AMPA activity then it will stay for shorter duration because as long as the stimulation of the presynaptic neuron happen there will be release of the glutamate and then via the attachment of the glutamate AMPA will stay open right once you remove the stimulus then everything will get abolished or removed but what else NMDA is doing NMDA was synthesizing certain substance that happen to be the nitric oxide in the Schaeffer collateral and that nitric oxide gets released from the post synaptic neuron and get attached it will go to the pre synaptic neuron and will automatically release the glutamate. So as long as this nitric oxide is getting synthesized and making the pre synaptic neuron to release the glutamate it will stay the AMPA and NMDA will stay open and this post synaptic neuron will stay depolarized as long as the glutamate is getting released because the glutamate is getting released they are open up there is depolarization happening and because they are opened up depolarization is happening there will be synthesis of the more and more nitric oxide more and more glutamate release so it will become a vicious cycle right it needs for the starting uh, one stimulus but after that it will work on its own so it might stay for days or the weeks then that is the intermediate type of the memory means there is physical changes happening over here physical changes means that physical changes will be either in the form of this Schaeffer collateral or certain neurotransmitter like this neurotransmitter is getting released certain new active zones are getting opened up and if the stimulus for this synaptic transmission between the pre synaptic neuron and the post synaptic neuron it is strong enough that it brings about certain structural changes like who was responsible for the synthesis of nitric oxide the protein kinase the protein kinase now this protein kinase can bring about the short term changes or very long term changes for the long term changes it has to synthesize new proteins okay it has to synthesize new proteins and those new protein synthesis will bring about the structural changes that structural changes can be either in the form of more number of the active zone synthesis like say this is the pre synaptic neuron that is very simple diagram it has got like say four terminals with the post synaptic neuron initially when that acquisition of the information didn't happen then there might be only one or two active zone or they might be stronger than this peripheral one right then after that acquisition of the information happened what it did it opened up all the four channels for synaptic terminals and they have become more and more active zone right that is one the second is the number of the vesicles which will release the neurotransmitter 
prior to the exposure there was only two just take the example two synaptic vesicles containing the neurotransmitter were getting released from each now instead of the two there will be the four right so more and more amount of the neurotransmitter is getting released so these kind of the changes will convert the memory into long term memory so that is the basis so these memory traces whether they stays for the shorter duration or the longer duration depending upon the changes were the chemical or the physical or the structural so that will divide the like the memory either in the short term or the long term now like in the previous section we have discussed about the type of the memory the declarative or the explicit and non declarative or the implicit now the declarative is of two type either for the facts certain facts or for regarding the certain episodes or the events in the life right now the fact regarding the fact and this is called as regarding the fact is the semantic memory okay this one the semantic memory that is one type of the explicit memory the second type is regarding the episodes or the events that is the episodic memory so it's the factual knowledge about the people the place or the things right so semantic memory is for regarding the words or the rules or the language like we say and now you are listening to this video you are acquiring new information you are learning and if you retain that learning that is called as the memory and that memory will be the declarative memory because you are learning about certain new concept right and the episodic memory is regarding the events we can say like certain event happen in the last like say day before yesterday what happened day before yesterday at 5 o'clock if i ask you what happened day before yesterday at 5 o'clock you will try to recall back day before yesterday at 5 o'clock you went to certain like say vasant kunj in delhi to meet your friend so and so friend okay so that is episodic memory now all these whether the regarding the factual or the episodic or regarding the events you need to be attentive right no attentive not only at the time of the acquisition but also recalling back so that's why this is associated with consciousness or at least awareness this explicit memory or the declarative memory and it depends on hippocampus or the other part of the medial temporal lobe for its retention hippocampal and other part of the medial temporal lobe will be needed for its retention it's not the site of retention the site of retention is like say regarding certain events or the object if we say like the factual memory is regarding the object or the fact or the concept like i say the word alarm clock now what will happen to the alarm clock everybody has got their own alarm clock so as soon as you hear the word alarm clock automatically there will be the visual impression like how it appears how many like whether it is a digital one or it has got the arms if it has got the arms it has got only two arms the seconds and hours or the three arms seconds hours and minutes right that is the visual automatically that image will come to your mind that is the visual aspect the second will be the auditory aspect like what kind of the sound the alarm produces everybody has got different style of the uh, alarm sound right the third one will be the somatosensory aspect that somatosensory aspect means regarding whether it is a rectangle or it is a circular one or if it is rectangle or the circular or the triangle one if it is made up of the plastic or the metal right so the word alarm clock brings about all these impression the visual auditory and the somatosensory what does it mean it means the visual aspect is getting stored in your visual part of the cortex okay association visual association areas and this auditory it has got stored in that auditory association areas similarly somatosensory in that particular part of the neocortex so we can say this memory regarding a particular object or particular fact it is not stored at a certain pinpoint like we can say it is stored in this part of the brain it is stored the bits and pieces uh, this bits and pieces of the information will stored in separate separate areas some aspect the visual aspect is stored in visual cortex auditory aspect is stored in auditory cortex similarly the somatosensory aspect is stored in somatosensory part of the cortex that is the precentral and the postcentral gyrus right so there is no general semantic memory stored 
it is not stored in a single region. Okay. So, depending on that like it is stored say this part of the brain it is stored in this particular area certain segment is stored over here, certain segment is stored over here, certain segment stored over here. If a particular part gets injured say this part gets damaged then this part of the memory will be affected and if there is injury to this part the all the three remaining will be intact but this segment will get damaged right. Depending on that we can say there is like say associative parietal lobe agnosia or associative visual agnosia means regarding the alarm clock we have taken the example of the alarm clock. So, if there happens to be any damage to the posterior parietal cortex then what will happen to that person? That person will not be able to name the object he will not be able to say it is an alarm clock he can draw the diagram like say this kind of the thing I have seen over there then you will ask what is it? He will not be able to say it is alarm clock because the part of the brain which is needed for naming the object it has got injured damaged. If there is damage to the occipital lobe then that person will be suffering from appreciative visual agnosia that person will be able to name say it is alarm clock or you will ask what it is he will say the alarm clock then you will ask how it appears then he can say yes it is creating this sort of the sound but will not be able to draw the diagram like this type of the thing. So, that is why the memory we cannot say that it is stored at a single part of the a brain and if it gets damaged the total loss will happen. No, it is stored at different different part of the brain and depending on which part gets affected you will lose that part of the memory and this is regarding the long term memory we are talking about the long term memory and if there happens to be any damage before this memory gets consolidated or stored for the longer duration if there happens to be any damage to the brain then the entire memory will be lost right. Now like the episodic or the autobiographical memory we covered about this like the last Sunday I visited at 5 o'clock to Vasant Kunz to meet my friend Rahul right. So, that is the memory of the event and personal experiences and it is stored in the association areas of the prefrontal cortex. Now, the implicit or the non declarative or the reflexive memory it is important for training reflexive motor and perceptual skill like it is of the four type one is the priming the other one is procedural and the third one is associative and the fourth one is non associative ok non associative learning. What was the associative learning? Associative learning was we have covered this part like conditioning like the classical conditioning was happening right for the classical conditioning or the operant conditioning it needed amygdala and the cerebellum amygdala for the emotional aspect and cerebellum for the motor aspect. Similarly, in the non associative memory that is habituation and sensitization that was regarding the reflex pathway whether they get strong enough or they get weakened. And the third part is the priming priming is facilitation of recognition of the words the perfect example is sometimes you know the thing but you are not able to recollect it. Jaise kehte na ki yaar word mujhe yaad aa raha but bas it is at the tip of my tongue but I am not able to say it. So, jaise hi aap thoda sa usko help karo say the first alphabet of the word that person will be able to recall back. So, that is the priming facilitation of the recognition of the words or the objects by prior exposure to them because he has been exposed to that particular event that particular word prior but is not able to recall back that is the priming depending on the neocortex. Procedural is you acquire any skill or any habit like skill you perform a surgeon performs a surgery particular surgery. So, at the time of acquiring the surgery he is very new the first time he is seeing the thing right uh, a particular surgery being performed he will learn that surgery. So, at the time of acquiring that knowledge of particular to perform a particular surgery he needs to be aware right. Jaise aap koi driving seekhte ho. So, at the time of learning the driving you have to be attentive you have to be aware, but once you have learned the driving after that there is no need to be attentive or attentive at every time you drive right unattentively unawarely you will drive 
So, this procedural once acquired it becomes implicit or non-declarative or reflexive memory there is no need. So, that is the basic difference between the declarative and non-declarative memory it does not need a person to be conscious or aware unaware or unattentively that person can perform these kind of the memory ok. And short term, long term and the working memory we have discussed the working memory it is yes working memory is in that prefrontal section I have discussed in detail when we were talking about the different different lobes. The working memory is like say if you have to dial a telephone number a new telephone number then what you will do you will just go through your phone and check the number and automatically you have to dial then how you will retain that memory of that particular number 10 digits either by memorizing them by verbally speaking like say 903838 and then the second part is that visual aspect that visual impression will be there like 903838 so that is the working memory for the like looking for the phone number in your phone book and then dialing it so by that time for few seconds you need the world to you need to remember that 10 digits that is the working memory and it is a short form of short term memory that keeps information available usually for very short period while the individual plans action based on it like that phone number what is your action you want to dial that number you want to call that number and it is governed by prefrontal cortex the prefrontal cortex acts as a executive right executive 